Right. Our next talk is The Mummy's Lichen at the Farlow Herbaria by Michaela Schmuel from the Harvard University Herbaria. Thank you. Um, before I start, I want to say thank you for doing this spotlight. Um, I absolutely love it. I learned so much. And uh, I have a little test in case I am um, moving um, towards that screen. Can you hear me still? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I'm talking today about um, uh, the lichen, um, Evernia fufuraceae, that you see. And let me actually start venturing over here. Um, that you see here in this picture. This is a lichen that was found um, on a female Egyptian mummy. It is still attached to a twig. And um, it was owned by the Natural History Society in Montreal, um, who did an unwrapping and unrolling of the female mummy in 1859. That was kind of like um, events that were uh, for members and uh, to gain more members for the society, so it wasn't anything unusual at that time. Um, when the people unrolled the um, lichen, uh, the mummy, sorry, they found the lichen and um, they sent it to a very well-known um, lichenologist, Edward Tuckerman, who lived in Massachusetts. And Edward Tuckerman got um, the specimen in this packet um, and it says what species it is, that it is about 2,500 years old. And then it says um, um, uh, uh, where he got it from. And it says, and let me quote, several handfuls of the lichen were found on the chest of the mummy over the spices um, and within all the wrappings. Um, so the found herbarium bought Edward Tuckerman's herbarium after he died in 1886, and it is um, part of our collection ever since. We did um, a little research project with the summer students um, to find out which mummy that specimen actually came from. And um, from the name that is here listed on this um, little packet, which is D. Allen Poe, um, we concluded that it was, and we also knew the, the Natural History Society in Montreal, we uh, contacted the Red Park Museum and um, Barbara Lawson was a huge help and so enthusiastic in helping us uh, finding this mummy. And she was actually able to identify um, the mummy. So this is the mummy where this specimen um, came from. And um, here you can see the mummy's name. Um, how you would pronounce it is um, down here. I have no idea how to read it now, so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, but uh, then the question was, so why was the lichen put there? So it wasn't growing there, it was put there by embalmers. And the lichens were used um, in embalming, is known for quite a while. Um, in this case, it was in between the wrappings, so probably the lichen was put there for um, preserving the odors of other spices. The lichens are still used in perfume industry, so they have that property. They have anti-microbial purposes and also are uh, absorbed water or liquids. So all of these could have um, helped and um, uh, be a reason why the lichen was put there. Plus, lichens often were put also on mummies to give them after organs were removed to give them back their original so that they didn't look so deflated. Um, since the lichen species that we have here didn't grow in Egypt at that time, the question was where did it come from? And um, it seems to be that actually it was important enough to be a trade, uh, a part of trade. So um, Egyptians imported um, lichens and um, this here, this little cone-looking thing in this red box is supposed to be, or is hypothetically um, thought to be the hieroglyphic character for lichen. 
Um, and here on this world map, you don't need to read it, um, but here where the red <coughs> is marked, this is where probably Egyptians traded like and from. So it's um, what Asia Minor is, so it's like the Turkey and Greece area, it's Crete, and then it here is on, um, um, here on the Africa and um, Saudi Arabia, kind of like peninsula, um, the areas where um, Egyptians really uh, bought their trade was like from. Thank you.